Well, meantime, we are following breaking news at the border. A federal judge has issued a temporary restraining order to keep a pandemic border policy in place after a lawsuit from Missouri, Louisiana, and Arizona. And last week, more than 20 states filed for a temporary restraining order, hoping to block the Biden administration from ending the pandemic border policy next month. Now, attorneys general from all those states sounding off, saying this is a huge victory for border security, but the fight is just beginning. All of this, of course, coming as lawmakers back on Capitol Hill today after a two-week recess. But time is ticking as they try to work through a jam-packed to-do list. Our D.C. Insider News Nation Washington Bureau Chief Mike Vicara joins us now. So, Vic, now that the tempor temporary restraining order is in motion, tell us what's next. Well, a lot of questions, Nicole, and good evening to you about just exactly what this, this judge, this federal judge, Robert Summerhays, in Louisiana is up to. It's called a temporary restraining order. So a lot of questions we don't know. How long will it last? Will the, the uh, Biden administration try to challenge it, uh, either in federal court or to the Supreme Court? A lot of questions to answer right now. Uh, joining me now at our News Nation rooftop studios here on Capitol Hill is Sarah Muha, political reporter from Axios. So this is a bomb that's just dropped into the middle of this debate. They're back, by the way, Congress, all 535 of them back after a two week recess and immigration, the southern border at the top of the agenda. How do you think that's going to affect this latest ruling is going to affect that debate? Well, it's really interesting that you say that, you know, they're back. They've got five weeks to get a lot of items done that are on their to do list. That includes a giant covid spending bill that they almost got bipartisan support on in the last session before right. they went on recess. Except, but yeah. exactly the sticking point being Title 42, title 42. a lot of moderate uh, Democrats wanted to include some uh, provision in there to delay the lifting of Title 42. Right. Along with every Republican. Along with every Republican. That's right. correct. And of course, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer knew that he was not going to be able to get bipartisan votes for right. that. And so um, that's going to be on the table. That's going to up right. the debate again. Yeah. When it comes to the southern border, you might say the writing is on the wall for the administration because, uh, you know, there are so many Democrats who are against the lifting of Title 42. And we have to say it. Every time, Title 42, the pandemic era restrictions that kept migrants out of the country for public health, health concerns. We, I think we have a full screen to show you about all of the items that are on the docket for this week, all of them dealing with immigration in the southern border. Today, a trip by the majority leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, to the border in Eagle Pass, Texas. Tomorrow, the Supreme Court. Here's a case on the controversial remain in Mexico policy that was held over from the Trump administration. Courts would not allow the Biden administration to lift it. A big debate in the Senate that you mentioned tied to Title 42 and COVID relief money and the Secretary of uh, Homeland Security on the hot seat, going to be grilled by Republicans on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, both, uh, both on the House and Senate side about the policies at the border. But I have to ask you, this ruling now coming out of Louisiana, given the fact that so many Democrats puts them in a tough spot, a blessing in disguise for Democrats? Look, this Title 42 Act has truly been a headache for the administration. Yeah. Uh, as Axios reported just last week, uuh, the White House internally, the senior officials were debating a delay themselves. Right. There have been so many Democrats coming out against it, as you probably noticed, during their recess week. So that's when they were back home with their constituents yeah. and they wanted Hear them to know where they yeah. were going to be hearing about it. Or yeah, what they absolutely. Felt. And the White House appears to be putting it in Congress's court now, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Secretary, uh, the press secretary, Jen right. Psaki, today was asked and she said it depends on how Congress acts right. whether or not this and will Congress lift just in might delay. Maybe May. they don't have to do it anymore. And one other thing on this, the fact that it was a Trump appointee, Summer mm -hmm. Hayes, this judge in Louisiana, really helps the administration. I think they can blame it more on him, blame it more on partisan politics. I want to very quickly sure. mention, speaking of Senate Democrats who are against yeah. lifting Title 42 is Joe Manchin from West Virginia. I found this interesting because it's so instructive mm -hmm. on how the Senate and politics in America works. Here's a guy elected to the Senate from a state that went for Donald Trump, elected as a Democrat, by 40 points. Right. And he is the, the left loathes him, the base of his own party loathes him because they think he's blocking President Biden's agenda, particularly the more progressive items of the agenda. Mm -hmm. Morning Consult did a survey. Which senator has gained the most in approval rating over the course of the last year. Well, you named him Senator Joe Manchin, Joe right? Joe Manchin. And what's so interesting about that is that the people, the reason that his approval ratings went up so much is because Republicans in his state right. jumped from a 35% favorability rating mm -hmm. to 
almost 70. So it almost doubles. That's where he's right. getting that approval from. I mean, from. he's the last Democrat standing in West Virginia at this point statewide. Former governor, he knows his state. Okay, Absolutely. special treat for us now. Direct from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, where our News Nation station uh, simulcasting across the state a big Republican senatorial debate happening up there tonight. Dennis Owens joins us now uh, from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for joining us, Dennis. Uh, a lot on tap, an exciting night, uh, high profile candidates there, a lot of money being spent on your, in your state. Uh, the Pennsylvania Senate race could determine control of the Senate. What are the big issues? What are you going to drill down on tonight? Well, the big issues, of course, issue number one would be the economy and inflation, the price of gasoline. We will certainly be talking about that. Title 42, as you were just talking about, and immigration will be coming up as well. Is it appropriate that we make policy for the southern border on an executive uh, order regarding health care? We will ask uh, the candidates about that. And electability is a big issue. Uh, Mehmet Oz, the TV doctor, he is leading in the polls or very close in the polls to a former hedge fund fellow by the name of Dave McCormick. There are three other candidates in the hunt uh, and all five will be on the stage. This is the first time all five of the top candidates, including yeah. Oz and McCormick, will be standing on the same stage. The primary election here is May 17th, so it's an exciting night. Uh, Mehmet Oz, you know him as Dr. Oz uh, from television fame. Right. Uh, he thinks he's got just the prescription for uh, success and it's, uh, that <laughs> prescription is Donald Trump. He has gotten the endorsement of former President Trump and just today, President Trump announced that he will have a rally one week from Friday in Westmoreland County, that's Western Pennsylvania, to endorse and have a yeah. rally for uh, Mehmet Oz. So certainly Mehmet Oz is uh, uh, riding high tonight. But that big debate is from eight to right. nine, and it's right here in our studios. Mike, yeah, just a little, little more than an hour from now. And I know you hosted the Democrats debating last week as well. Those Pennsylvania Democrats who are vying to replace Pat Toomey, the retiring Republican. There, uh, I want to ask you though, uh, there's a. There's a, a perception that some of these leading Republican candidates are coming in from out of state, have not spent a lot of time in the Commonwealth. Are they suffering for that? What's the climate there as we head into uh, this primary on May 17th? So that is a very interesting question you asked because we, at the end of March, early April, did a poll. 70% of voters said that uh, an endorsement from Donald Trump does matter. It is important. Uh, but And uh, Mehmet Oz has gotten that endorsement. They also said that residency in right. Pennsylvania matters. However, the top two people in the polls, Mehmet Oz and Dave McCormick. Dave McCormick was a hedge fund guy who grew up in Pennsylvania but hasn't right. been here for 15 years. And Mehmet Oz, who went to the University of Pennsylvania, which is in Philadelphia, had his kids, which are in Philadelphia. Married a Philadelphia area girl, but otherwise has never lived in Pennsylvania. Uh, so uh -huh. it's supposedly an important issue, but they continue to lead in the polls, and that might be a weakness for okay, them. Dennis, and I can guarantee you it will come up. But the big question here tonight how often will Mehmet Oz mention that he is uh, endorsed by former President Trump? We expect it'll happen early, we expect right. it'll happen late, and we expect it to happen a lot in the middle. Mike? Den Dennis, very quickly, I'm joined by Sarah Muha. She has a question for you. I do. So, uh, Dennis, yeah. we learned, we did a, a poll from people that there's a lot of outside money pouring into this race, and both candidates are spending millions of their own dollars. Is there a sense from Pennsylvanians whether or not they care where this money's coming from? Well, it is unprecedented, the amount of money that is being spent. And a recent report suggests that almost all of it is coming from outside the state. But again, as I mentioned, the polls are showing that the two, uh, if that's an offense, the two biggest offenders are the ones also leading in the polls. So we, we're going to find out on May 17th, ultimately, whether that matters. But it is a fact that the two candidates, top candidates, are from outside the state. And all of that money is coming in from outside the state as well. And it is a record in Pennsylvania, and we're not even gotten, we're still a month away from the primary. Okay. Dennis, thank you very much. A big debate, a little more than an hour now, across Pennsylvania, yep. uh, hosted in the capital of the Commonwealth of Harrisburg. Thank you. And with that, Sarah, let's toss it back to Nicole. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.